follows an extract from my book Fête Fatale, available from Amazon. Chapter 16, Part 2 Maddox realised that matters had become serious and he decided that he'd get to work that very afternoon. He enjoyed working with DCI James and knew that the temporary partnership was a massive boost to his career profile. He didn't want to waste time if there was profitable work to be done. A Sunday afternoon would be the best time to catch people at home too. Keen as he was to get started, he made sure that he gave his mum's roast dinner the proper attention that it deserved and he even made a start on clearing away the dishes. His mum was used to the subtle undertones and a policeman's thinking. She'd been married to a policeman and knew the signs long before Bobby followed in his dad's footsteps. You're itching to be off, I can tell, she said. No need to tell me what it's all about. I can guess well enough and don't need to hear the details. Be off with you and I'll finish up here. Hugging his mum, Maddox then reached for his trainers. He figured that as today was Sunday, he could keep his visits relatively unofficial and didn't bother with his uniform. During lunch, he'd been wondering where would be best to start. James had asked him to find out where everyone was on the day of the fete to start with. He couldn't go pestering Beth again, she'd had enough of them all that morning. Emma had been to the fete all day and so had Nathaniel. They'd been in different parts of the field too, so he would get a wider picture straight away. He kept pushing to the back of his mind the notion that he also thought he'd heard that Henrietta was visiting them for lunch today too. If he acknowledged the thought at all, he cloaked it with the notion that he'd get even more information at the same time, so it had to be a good idea. Knocking on the door of Lilac Cottage, Maddox began to have second thoughts. He'd no idea what questions he might ask, and he suddenly wondered if meeting Henrietta by apparent coincidence was such a good idea. The option to turn away was taken from him when Emma opened the front door. Hello, Bobby, come in, said Emma. As he stepped into the lounge, the feeling of a content family atmosphere was physically tangible. Nathaniel was sitting in the easy chair with his legs stretched out before him and Emma resumed her place sitting on the floor by his feet, leaning back on his chair. Henrietta was comfortably stretched out on the sofa and Walter the Labradoodle sat on the floor while she scratched behind his ears. The children were nowhere to be seen at first as he scanned the room. I'll put the kettle on. It's tea with about 20 sugars, isn't it? said Emma. I'm afraid you're quite right, to my shame, said Maddox. He sat down and took in the details of the room. Under the open plan staircase, in the recess of the lounge, a small teepee housed some muffled shrieks of laughter and the flap then opened to reveal two small faces. Emma and Nathaniel had pooled their skills to make this impressive construction. Nathaniel had secured five sturdy canes into a wigwam shape and then attached the top to the underside of the stair tread. Emma had sewn a mixture of flower print and polka dot fabric to cover the frame and had fastened a series of ribbons to the opening flaps. The shades echoed the gold and lilac decor of the lounge and also the name of the cottage. Nathaniel explained that the endeavour had been well worth the time they'd invested as Primrose spent all the time that she could in there. On special occasions she'd even slept in there while Nathaniel slept on the sofa so as to be close at hand. Primrose was evidently proud of her residence and Maddox was honoured by a request to join them. When Emma brought the tray of drinks through Maddox wasn't to be found in the chair where she'd left him but his feet could be seen sticking out from the fabric door of the teepee. He seemed quite at home there, so she placed his drink within arm's reach of the entrance flap. Maddox peeped his head out of the door flap to talk to the others. I am sorry to disturb your afternoon, and I'm afraid that this isn't exactly a social visit. If this is official, hadn't you better come and sit here, said Henrietta, motioning to the space next to her. Maddox blushed a little. I'll finish my colouring first and when my back can't stand it any longer I'll come and join the grown-ups. Emma laughed. You've made some good friends there if they've consented to share the pencil cranes with you. Just make sure that you don't go over the lines. I was hoping that you could help me out, began Maddox. Your uncle has said that we need to go right back to the day of the fete and find out what everybody was doing. 
I know that it was a while ago now, but I need to find out who did what and when throughout the day. I was hoping that you could get me started, said Maddox. I've brought some cakes through. Hurry up and finish your colouring so that you can eat some and we can talk to you properly, said Emma. I won't be long now. Maddox crawled most of his frame back into the teepee and sat colouring and whispering with the children for a few minutes. When he appeared out of the tent, he needed a moment to click and stretch his back. Without thinking, he handed a picture of a teddy bear holding a bunch of flowers to Henrietta. Henrietta laughed. You're quite the artist, aren't you? I don't like to brag, replied Maddox. Sitting more comfortably in the easy chair, he helped himself to cake and prepared to get down to business. For the full book of Fête Fatale, available in paperback or as an e-book, follow the link in the cards in the description box or find details on my website at SharonBill.com. Thanks for listening.